I'm walking right now to get the mail because I can't get out of the driveway. Day in the life. Outside and have like the snow is this really pretty um, backdrop and did not work at all. Phone got totally wet. My whole self got totally wet, which is why I'm wearing a hat right now. All right, Opie, let's tell them about Alaska. Are you ready? You want to tell them? I got the opportunity to come up here in November for a house sit and came across this opportunity for a four month long house sit and really, really hasn't disappointed. Alaska is like pretty intimidating for most people. So I wanted to just do a series kind of highlighting what it's really like and, you know, giving some advice and tips for people who are coming up here for the first time. It's not like one of these places that, you know, you can do everything touristy all year round. So you really need to think about, why the heck do I want to come to Alaska? What do I want to do when I'm there? of coming in the winter versus the summer. Winter seems to be way more affordable. Um, I had to rent a car up here and it was like 20 bucks a day, you know, pretty average uh, rental price. And I was talking to the rental car guy and he told me that in the summer, there are streaks where a car can cost $140 a day. So yeah. I mean, I think this is pretty much with anywhere, but really, especially if you're coming to Alaska in the summer, because that's what it's really expensive. Plan in advance, as far as in advance as possible. In the winter, it's really not as big of a deal. I booked my flight like the month before coming up here this time, and it was 160 bucks. If you're trying to do Alaska budget friendly and you're wanting more of the summer experience, consider coming like right before or right after the height of the summer season. So May or September. If you're wanting to really get a feel of the entire state, I would recommend two or three weeks. Since I personally have really just been in the Anchorage area, surrounding areas, there's a lot of places that are on my bucket list still for my time here. Here is a list of the places that I still am really wanting to check out. Hopefully I get to all of them. We'll see how it goes. I really want to do the kayaking through the glaciers. It looks like the coolest thing. It's like top of my bucket list. And here are some places that I have already checked out in and around this area that I think are really cool. Uh, uh. If you see this little head on and off through this video, I apologize. He is wanting to defend as the security guard who is not wanted actually by anybody. Uh, no, I want it. He is probably going to be in this video with me and be held so he doesn't bark and want to talk to the video the whole time. Also not to toot his own horn, but he did awesome on the plane. He was a model dog in riding on a plane, so I think he can go just about anywhere now. Wise, it's very common for people to rent an RV and drive around here, but Airbnb is always a great option. I really recommend um, checking out house sitting if you're coming in the summer. That is what I'm doing right now. Take a look at Google Maps if you are wanting to plan some type of RV trip through Alaska before you actually decide to because it is huge. I mean, it is twice the size of Texas and times the size of Iceland if you are somebody who's traveled to either one of those places. So if you're wanting to actually drive here and uh, in an RV and see a lot of places, it's quite the commitment. Alaska is not like the lower 48 where you can just drive wherever you want. There are not very many roads here. In Anchorage, there's like one highway going out the north side and there's one going out the south side. And just a little pro tip, if you are 
really going to Alaska and you're coming in the winter, you really have to think about where you're staying, what kind of car you're, is going to get you around. Yeah, because if you want the little snowy vibe in the mountains, it might not be a possibility to leave always if you have other things planned and you got to kind of work around that, so. Something else I have learned the hard way, but there are a lot of dead areas without cell service here. It's really important that you download maps so that you can get your way back if you did rent a car or maybe if you're hiking, just to make sure you're not kind of stranded out there and there's nowhere, to, no way to call anybody because it's, it can be really scary. Um, that's really just good advice for anywhere that you travel. Make sure you download the local maps and can navigate your way back if a disaster happens. You know, I am somebody who normally is used to renting a car and kind of just exploring on my own, take stopping and taking pictures along the way. But this is definitely one of the places that I would recommend going on a tour or an Airbnb experience. Just because the driving up here is super, it's a different level. <laughs> I think you can you know, have a loose itinerary, but already determining the activities that you want to do and kind of planning your outfits by those activities. If you want some help in planning your outfits by activity, you can check out my packing planner right in the description box below. It feels really just like a city in the lower 48. Um, there's kind of all the amenities that you could want here. All the stores that you could want are here. I was under the impression everything was just going to be so expensive at the store. I would say it's a little bit higher than normal, but there isn't sales tax on any of the food. I think that makes such a big difference. I thought it was going to be really unreasonable when I first came up here and I was definitely a person who had a suitcase just full of food and coffee, but it really isn't just it's this crazy, super, super expensive um, grocery store experience. Something else that I was kind of shocked about is the amount of people who fly all the time here. I feel like every time I go outside, I hear the sound of a little plane. Specifically in Anchorage, the whole uh, not very many hours of daylight, it's not really that big of a difference. It's a little, like slightly shorter, but I haven't noticed anything crazy. I guess in the summer is when it's like super bright the whole time, it, you know, you have the land of the midnight sun type of thing. It's the further up you go, like Fairbanks, it's actually dark pretty much all the time this time of year. But I think it's kind of this misconception that it's like either always totally dark or totally light. If there is something in particular that you found out in this video that you didn't know beforehand, please drop it in the comments below. I'm really out of breath. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and you can also check out my Instagram. Check out the rest of the videos in this series and if you have any suggestions of things that you want to see a little bit differently, it's a little bit of a different type of video for me. So it's a little bit of a learning curve, but yeah, let me know.